Hello everybody, today we will start a small tutorial regarding Python object oriented. Let's define a class called a student. So we'll simply write the keyword class as we studied before, then the name of my class, which is student in this case, a column. Now let's start by defining our constructor, which is as follows double underscore in it, then for example. Um, this one. Let's say, of course, it will take the self as we studied before, like any function you define in a class, an object oriented class in Python should have the self, which is a reference to the object itself, like this in other programming languages. Now, a student, let's assume that a student has first name, name, let's make a general, age and student ID, that's all. Oh, we forgot the column, sorry. So here's my column. Then uh, let's define the attributes of this class, which are the name. So self dot, I will make them as private variable. So that's why I'm adding, as you can see here, the double underscore. Now the name is equal to the N, the parameter sent by the user. So, when the user, let me go to the guest part, to the user part, so you will understand. Assume he will be creating student1 equals to student, which is the name of my class, and he will be giving me three values. The first one would be the name, for example. Then we have the age. Then we have the student ID which for example, two, three, four. Now, when he's creating this one, as we, as we say it in the lecture, now, student will internally call the init function. When he calls the init function, name would be updated to n, so in this case, the name would be equals to hulud. Then, regarding the age, Let's do some control. So if age sent by the user uh, less than, for example, I don't know, let's say 18 or 17, assuming that I don't have any university student less than 17, then what shall I do? Simply print invalid age. And let's set the age of this to a default value, let's say 18. We could do that, we could do any assumption. So set the age equals to 18. This is my assumption. Don't forget I will be adding set age to control the age. Now we still have another parameter. Now else, sorry else if it is proper then I will do what I always put it the column sorry equals to the age this age the parameter sent by the user this age is the attribute this age is the parameter don't get confused generally I prefer to use different naming so it will make you make it easier for you to understand so in this case this ag is the, this is the parameter sorry age is the attribute of my class we still have the last parameter which is the sid so sid let's say self dot again it's private equals to the send sid We could do control for this ID as well. We could assume that this ID has only three digits or something. We could do any control we want. For now, for simplicity, let's keep it as like this only. Now, what other function do I need in student? Uh, what do we have? Like, let's create the sitters and getters. So, def. What do we have? 
we have set age okay it will take a parameter which is the age I will just copy and paste what I what I did already in my constructor regarding the age so here I am why is it invalid no. indentation is true so here we are now uh, let's do get age And then go. let's say now if you are familiar with any programming language object oriented programming language you know that getters never take parameters they return values however setters are the opposite setters take parameter and never return anything because they set the value now return simply the h cell dot h now uh, let me define uh, get what we have get name as well so simply return the name attribute of student what else do I need mostly we have getter and sitter for each attribute so in this case, we will have six, three sitters and three getters because I'm having three attributes. So three getters and three sitters. We have defined get age, get name, now get s i d. So it will return s i d. Okay, now what do what do we need to do as well? We still need to define two setters, which is set is id and set mm. name. Mm. So let me copy and paste. Indentation. Don't forget. Mm. Now set name. It will take the name from user and then simply cell dot the name attribute will be equal to name parameter sent by the user. Now the last set would be SID so SID will be equal to the SID or let's make it ID which is the parameter value sent by the user let's try what we did now now this is a simple tutorial to illustrate the use of getters and setters with the private attributes now I have defined from the beginning this is student now after defining this since I have the sitters and getters then I am able to update all the parameters so let me try so s1 dot here you are you can see the methods that I have defined before let's simply change the age so sit age equals to what I will give for example let's say 29 this will update my age yeah by the way let's do a printing function to make sure that I in order to help me to check what I have changed so there is a predefined function it's called this tr now this function it will take self like all functions in Python and object oriented now what does it do it returns the string that you want to display when you print 
your object so let's try this so when I print S1 without defining this str let's see what will happen let's see let's run what's going on we have an error so let's see where is this error it's here yeah because of indentation again and again okay and this should no this is should be part of the f and this should be indented i think we are good now why is it all red now why is it not defined i'm not sure aha uh -huh. i did okay sorry i need to give self i said that before i did not apply it we need to give self as parameter for all the functions for all the methods so here we are now this should be self must be the first parameter as we explained in the video related to object oriented and python okay i guess we are fine now let's let's see good can you see what does it print when i am printing the object this is actually the address of s1 generally we don't want to see the address we want to see the content of s1 so in order to see the content i need to overwrite the function str so i will organize my parameters in a way that i want to see it in the print function so assume i want to see self dot name for example then i need a tab let's say i want my values to be split by tab then what else we have self name we also have the age so let me write the age here and the last thing would be the id student id here we are let's try it We forgot the column, sorry, now let's see. Tiger, what happened? Aha, uh -huh. okay, because the age is integer, I need to convert it into strength. If you are familiar with Java, this will never occur. Automatically, it will be converted. However, okay, the SID is as well. So I need to convert it into string. Here we are, similar. Good. Can you see now? It's printing what I wanted. It's printing the content of S1. This is the name, which is followed. Then this is the age and this is the student ID. If you want to change certain things, of course, you could do. For example, I could say uh, student student name and then a column, for example, class. And then what do I need? Then what do I have? Age and a column. Whatever you want to write. Then lastly, I would say SID, a column, let's do it now, here we are, student name, then age, then SID, as you can see. Now, after updating the age, let's try to print. So, I will print S1 after using the set age. So, let's see what will be printed. So, here we are. Can you see the age has changed? That's all for today. Thank you very much. Stay safe.